Hello, and welcome to another episode of Jackson Talks. Everybody, with me, your host, Aaron Mashvitz, a.k.a. Jackson Stone. And this is episode 109 of Jackson Talks, everybody. And I'm filming today on August 2nd, 2022. This episode will come out a few weeks after. As episode 107 was with Logan Mulligan. Episode 109 was with, or episode 108, excuse me, was with Morgan Mercy. And this is me, episode 109. This will be an episode on installing and deleting habits. It will be a master class on installing and deleting habits. So if that interests you, stay for the next short while as you'll get some really good information on how to install and delete habits. And then one uh, episode 110 will be with Dr. Annie Brook and then continuing to drop a new episode every single Tuesday. If you're new to Jackson Talks, everybody, thank you for joining. This is an excellent episode for you to, to, uh, to listen or watch an episode. If you're a viewer or a listener or watcher who's coming back every single week, thank you so much. I appreciate you more than you know. We're constantly trying to upgrade here at Jackson Talks, everybody, to give you the best possible information, the best guests, the best everything. Your feedback and your questions, your comments are all very important and I need them and I want them. So please reach out. And if you want an exclusive episode of Jackson Talks, everybody, every month, subscribe for $5 a month on Patreon or there's a $1 a month and a $3 a month and higher. And that money directly supports this podcast and um, directly supports all my mental health initiatives through my nonprofit, which is You Are Loved. So there's that, episode 109. Here we go, a masterclass on installing and deleting habits, how to write algorithms in your life to continue to show up as the best version of yourself, right? So really it's about understanding where you're at, which is point A, knowing what you're ultimately capable of, your best self, your highest potential, and unlocking that. Your habits, your tiny daily actions, your choices are what will close the gap moment by moment, day by day, plus one, plus one, plus one, until your prior best becomes your new baseline, your lows become your new highs, and you just keep on stepping. You're never finished, you're never exonerated from the work, it's a journey, it's a continuous process, it's constant evolve, uh, constant evolution for you and who you are and what your best is and what you're capable of. But that's what habits are, okay? Tony Robbins says, it's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives, it's what we do constantly. Greatness, success, whatever definition you wanna use, is achieved through consistently doing the fundamentals, mastering the fundamentals. Kobe Bryant, that's what he was about. Mastering the fundamentals, consistently honing in on your fundamentals is the key to greatness. And that boils down to your daily habits, your daily choices, these micro decisions that you think might not have a big impact on your life that are actually having the biggest impact on your life. So what basically is another quote that I'll kind of hone this in, right? I wish you very small successes over and over and over again. I wish you very small successes over and over and over again. That's what this is about. That's what this is about, creating those mini habits, those mini habits that are going to create the biggest, the biggest results, okay? Smaller habits, bigger results. And now I'm gonna go through kind of uh, some of these things that I have found that have worked for me. I have a couple notebooks over here if you're watching on YouTube. I've been taking a class, I've read a few books, and I just kind of want to tell you some of the information that's been the most beneficial for me. Okay, so we're gonna start, right? So we're, we're thinking today about mini habits or atomic habits. Both are books, one's called Mini Habits, one's called Atomic Habits. Both are great books, I suggest reading them, I got a lot of information from them, but that's what you have to think about, right? That's the idea you have to get into your head, that it's about breaking it down to the smallest possible thing. 
smaller the better. Smaller the better. Because in many habits, they say, too small to fail. Too small to fail are your many habits. They're too small to fail. They're stupid small, which equals crazy good, right? Yes, too small to fail, too small to fail. Many habits, many habits are a pretty simple brain trick at the core, but also a life philosophy that values starting, letting action precede motivation and believing that small steps can accumulate into giving, into giant leaps forward. That's what many habits are, too small to fail. And so if we think about these many habits, and we think about habits, right? The first thing we kind of have to do is be completely honest about where we are in our current situation. We have to get really honest with ourselves, with our current situation. So the first step would be recognition or awareness of what's going on. Right, so you're kind of feeling like you need to make a change. So you're aware of it, you understand it. You feel like you're a little off. You feel like things could be a little bit better. You have a bit of hope for your future. You're feeling a bit of agency, right? And so then step number two would be to accept your current situation. Fully accept what is because that is what is. And you have to accept that because no one's ever beaten reality, right? You have to accept reality and you have to move from that honest, accepted place. And then step three is what this is really about is action. Okay, you can have awareness, great. You have to be aware of something to change it, right? So we have awareness. You have to then accept it. You have to then accept it, but then the final and most important step is you have to have action. Feelings follow behavior. Feelings follow behavior. We wanna set up protocols in our life that run algorithmically. So our, our life runs algorithmically. So we have algorithms set up and protocols set up and toolkits set up. So when we do feel our worst, we stick to our protocols the most. And when we're feeling our best, we also stick to our protocols because it's about consistency on the fundamentals. What are the fundamentals? What are the fundamentals? Eating, moving, sleeping, and thinking. And thinking can encompass focusing, prospering, and gratitude. So those are the fundamentals. You have to be consistent on the fundamentals. You have to dial in on those fundamentals. Then you can move from that place, right? So you have to be aware that you need to make a change. You have to accept exactly what is, and then you have to get into action. And getting into action is about creating these mini habits that are too small to fail. For example, you want to start reading more. Okay. What's a habit you can create? I will read one page a day. I will read one page a day. That's it. You can do that. 100% you can do that. And there's a great chance when you do that and you actually sit down to read one page, you will start doing bonus reps after you meet that small requirement. Because we have... Because you're, yes, that's it, right? Is like, you have to make them too small to fail, right? Say you wanna work out, go into the gyms, out of the question, you don't have the motivation for it just yet, right? Or you wanna start meditating, okay? Or you wanna start walking. Start with something so small that it's impossible to fail. I will read one book a day, one page a day, excuse me. I will, I will do one squat a day. I will do one push-up a day. I will take one deep breath a day. All of those things are habits you can create. You right? wanna start one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, right? One thing at a time, follow it through, make it a routine, make it a commitment, make it a habit, and then go to something else. But you wanna make it too small to fail. Those are many habits, because we're, we're, we're tricking our brain 
right? And then we're doing bonus reps. So really we're doing three squats or three push-ups, but we're telling ourselves that we only have to do one a day and then we get it done. And then we start to trust ourselves and then we start to earn agency, right? And then you start to positively reinforce yourself by saying, that's like me, that's like me, that's like me, that's like me. If your goal is to do 20 minutes of meditation every day and you've never sat down and meditate for one minute, you're not setting yourself up for success. This is setting you up for success. So you're building on top of it. You're building on top of it. You're earning trust in yourself. So start small. That's why awareness is the first step. Second step is acceptance because if you're not accepting your absolute current reality, if you're not rubbing your circumstances against your current reality and being very honest and accepting what is, then you're not gonna be able to uh, bring it down small enough where you'll actually do it. If you, wanna, if you wanna clean your room, your room is dirty, I will put away one piece of clothing today. Boom, and then you might do bonus reps, or that might be it, but you did exactly what you said you would do. And you're that kind of person to say, to do what you say you're gonna do. Now you're affirming your values. Now affirming your true self. Now you're earning trust in yourself, right? And then you're building on those habits. That's why action is the most important step because you have to get moving. You have to get moving. So the most important thing you can take from that mini habits book is that you want to build those mini habits where they're too small to fail. And then you build on top of those and bonus reps will come and now you start to have a habit and that'll be part of your routine and you'll be consistent on those fundamentals and you'll start closing the gap and becoming that best version of you on a more consistent basis. Okay. And then we look at probably the most well-known book on habits is um, James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. And he says... If you're having trouble changing your habits, the problem isn't you. The problem is your system. Bad habits repeat themselves again and again, not because you don't want to change, but because you have the wrong system for change. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Making a choice that is 1% better or 1% worse seems insignificant in the moment. But over the span of moments that makes up a lifetime of these choices, determine the difference between who you are and who you could be. Success is the product of daily habits, not a once in a lifetime transformation. Success is the product of daily habits. Greatness is consistency on the fundamentals. They're the same thing, okay? They're the same thing. That's why tiny changes lead to remarkable results. You should be more concerned with your current trajectory than with your current results. If you want to predict where, where you'll end up in life, all you have to do is follow the curve of your tiny gains or tiny losses and see how your daily choices will compound 10 or 20 years down the line. It's about the unsexy, mundane choices we make every day that create the most beautiful, fulfilling, purposeful lives. We have to get so locked in and dialed into our fundamentals, eating, moving, sleeping, thinking well, which is about focusing, prospering and gratitude, okay? Eating, if you want three simple rules for eating, here's three simple rules for eating. One, stop drinking sugar. Two, eat real food. And three, have an eating sunset, okay? There's a lot more that can be said about nutrition, but if you start doing those three things on a consistent basis, it will help. Movement, you have to move your body. And it's not, doesn't, movement doesn't mean exercise at the gym. Movement means finding opportunities to move throughout the day. Walking, dancing, yoga, any sort of movement pattern that could be lifting weights, that could be bike riding, that could be jogging, that could be doing something in your house, that could be just parking a little farther away from the store, that could be always taking the stairs. It's finding opportunities to move your body throughout the day and then getting about 30 minutes of kind of moderate to vigorous activity each day, okay? Eating, moving, sleeping. 
sleeping is the most important thing. Okay, all these fundamentals are the most important thing. So you're gonna say eating is the most important thing. Moving is the most important thing. Sleeping is the most important thing. Thinking well is the most important thing. All four are the most important thing. That's why they're the fundamentals. Sleeping, target is seven to nine hours every single night. The most elite performers on the planet, on average, sleep eight hours and 36 minutes every night. So if they're the most elite performers on the planet, why do you think that you should get less? Seven to nine hours is the target, okay? And one key factor is limiting your screen time as you start to wind down and get off all electronics one hour before you go to bed and then go to bed. Your room should be a place where you sleep, where you relax seven to nine hours. You have you wanna have an AM routine and a PM routine. Okay, because your PM routine sets you up for the AM and your AM sets you up for the whole day, which sets you up for your PM, which sets you up for a good night of sleep. A good night of sleep is the best thing we can have for our body, right? A good night of sleep is the bridge from despair to hope. A good night of sleep is the bridge from despair to hope. But a bad night of sleep is the bridge of the opposite direction. So we have to hone in on our sleep. And then thinking, thinking well, of course we want to think well. Right? Our mental health is extremely important. Our mental well-being, how we focus, how we prosper, our gratitude, our toolkits, the way we talk to ourselves, our relationship with ourselves. We have to hone in on that. We have to be aware of it. We have to accept it and we have to have action because feelings follow behavior. All the fundamentals are about creating daily habits, tiny changes that lead to remarkable results. So if you want to start anywhere, if you want to start anywhere, start with eating, moving, sleeping, and thinking and do one at a time. Hone in on your eating, hone in on your moving, on your sleeping, and on your thinking. And attack these things tiny, right? Just from like we've said before with many habits, make them too small to fail. And then you'll start doing bonus reps, and you'll start to trust yourself. And then you'll start to move from that place. And it's not all gonna be sunshine and rainbows. You're gonna, you're gonna fall. You're gonna take steps back. You're gonna get, have setbacks. You're gonna have obstacles. Things are gonna get in the way right? But once you've made that commitment, once you've made that bright line that you're going to do this, that you are committing to yourself, then you understand that there are gonna, there's going to be adversity, there's going to be challenges, there's going to be setbacks. And one of the things that you can do, one of the things that you can do, let me find it in my notes here. One of the things that you can do is you can give yourself what's called the self-compassion healing balm. Self-compassion healing balm. Okay? Self-compassion healing balm. Right? Number one is just be nice to yourself. Right? Shame. Shame and guilt don't work. Shame and guilt don't work in terms of uh, recovering from a setback or an obstacle or adversity or a mistake. Right, so self-compassion, healing bomb one is be nice to ourselves. Understand that maybe we did fall short of our standards. That's okay, that's okay. We still have warmth, love, and support for each other. And we just say, oops, that needs work. No shame, no guilt, just oops, that needs work. And we go back to work the next day and we set up another habit or an algorithm that'll help us succeed through that the next time. Number two is common humanity. We all struggle, everyone struggles. So that's, that's part of your self-compassion healing bomb is have that common humanity for yourself because you would for someone else. And then three, just be mindful. Be mindful of the situation that goes right into your, um, one of your fundamentals, which is thinking well, which is being mindful, which is being present. Mindfulness is um, a particular way of focusing on the present moment without judgment. So there's that. Be present in the, focus, in the present moment without judgment. Right? So that's your self-compassion healing balm when, when things maybe don't go the way you want them to or where things fall a little bit short. Right? Because creating habits takes time. Right? Takes time. And time really means, right, time, T, time, I, intentional, M, mindful, E, enriching. Right? So if you're willing to take the time to do that, then you're gonna have the time, intentional, mindful, enriching, right? And that's important when we're trying to discover these habits, right? Habits are the compound interest of self-improvement. The way that money multiplies through compound interest, the effects of your habits multiply as you repeat them. They seem to make little difference 
on any given day, yet the impact they deliver over the months and years can be enormous. It is only when looking back two, five, or perhaps 10 years later that the value of good habits and the cost of bad ones becomes strikingly apparent. Okay? Strikingly apparent. Identity change, identity change is the North Star of habit change. The, yeah. Identity change is the North Star of habit change. Identity change is the North Star of habit change. Are you becoming the type of person you want to become? The first step is not what or how, but who. You need to, you need to know who you want to be. Otherwise, your quest for change is like a boat without a rudder, and that's why we're starting here. You have the power to change your beliefs about yourself. Your identity is not set in stone. You have a choice in every moment. You can choose the identity you want to reinforce today with habits you choose today. Okay? Building better habits is not about littering your day with life hacks. It's not about flossing one tooth each night or taking a cold shower each morning or wearing the same outfit each day. It's not about achieving external measures of success like earning more money, losing weight, or reducing stress. Habits can help you achieve all those things, but fundamentally they are not about having something. They are about becoming someone, becoming the best version of you. Ultimately, your habits matter because they help you become the type of person you wish to be. They are the channel through which you develop your deepest beliefs about yourself. Quite literally, you become your habits. Identity equals repeated beingness. Who are you being? Who are you becoming? Who do you want to become? Your habits will allow you to become the best version of yourself on the most consistent basis possible. And that's why it's important to dial in on them and then dial in deeply on the fundamentals. You start there with the fundamentals. You create habits and rituals and protocols and algorithms around your fundamentals. And then you create the identity of the best person of you, of who you want to become, of who you know you can become, of who you know, um, of who you know you can become and the things you can achieve through dialing in on your habits and creating that best version of you, right? So then we go into the four laws of behavior change. Okay, four laws of behavior change. First law is Q. Second law is craving. Third law is response. Fourth law is reward. So now we go, we change those four laws of behavior uh, change into uh, what James Clear talks about, how four ways to make a good habit and four ways to make, uh, break a bad habit. <clears throat> so four ways on how to create a good habit. One, make it obvious. Two, make it attractive. Three, make it easy. Four, make it satisfying. So what do those mean? Make it obvious is very simple, right? It's very simple. Make it obvious is very similar to many habits of too small to fail. So I will meditate in the morning. Cool. One breath. I will work out tomorrow. One push up. Okay. You want to make the cue obvious by designing your environment. Perhaps you could put the cushion you'll sit on in your way from your bed to the bathroom so you trip over it. That's obvious. Or if you want to work out, put your gym clothes in the same spot, etc. I want to read more. Read one page. Make it obvious. Make it attractive. Law number two. Think about all the research demonstrating the benefits you want. A calm mind, etc. You can also pair with something you really enjoy doing, like drinking a cup of tea or coffee after you meditate. Another good way, join a culture where your desired behavior is the normal behavior. So make it attractive, right? Make it attractive. Law number three is similar to make it easy, but it, uh, or make it obvious. Law number three is make it easy. Easiest way to make it easy, downscale your habits until they become done in two minutes or less. Think silly small, many habits. We also want to master the decisive, this, the decisive moment. Optimize the small choices that deliver outsized impact. Think winning, fight. Anyways, make it easy, right? So think silly, small, many habits. And then four, make it satisfying. 
Give yourself immediate reward after doing your new habit. Give yourself immediate reward after doing your new habit. I've talked about this, positive reinforcement, that's like me. You, re you read one page, you do one push up, you meditate for one minute or do one breath or do anything that you're trying to do where you've made it obvious, you've made it attractive and you made it easy and you got it done, make it satisfying, fist bump, that's like me. Fist bump, that's like me. You're reinforcing that positive behavior, you're celebrating yourself, you're making it satisfying, you're acknowledging yourself and then that behavior will be repeated over and over again until it becomes consistent, to become second nature, to becomes part of your every day. So that's how you build a new habit. And how to break a bad habit is uh, the opposite, basically, right? So make it invisible, okay? Make it invisible. So thinking about willpower, you wanna buy your willpower out the store, so that means don't buy junk food, right? So you're making it invisible. You don't, you wanna eat a little bit better, you wanna reduce the amount of sugar you eat, right? You wanna reduce the amount of sugar you eat, don't buy it at the store, don't have it in your house. Okay, you're buying your willpower at the store. Second, make it unattractive. Right, so reframe your mindset. Highlight the benefits of avoiding the bad habit. For example, imagine your energy being stabilized and your health being optimized. Okay, so make it unattractive. Reframe your mindset. Third, make it difficult. Increase friction by increasing the number of steps between you and your bad habits. For example, you need to drive to a grocery store to buy junk food. And fourth, make it unsatisfying. Keep that reframe from above in mind and make a connection between your spike crash and energy levels to that junk food, okay? The only way to become excellent, the only way to become excellent is to be endlessly fascinated by doing the same things over and over. You have to fall in love with boredom, which basically means greatness is built on consistency through the fundamentals. Honing in on your daily habits every single day. Right, and there's another thing about creating habits, right? Behavior equals map. Behavior equals map. Map is motivation, ability, prompt. And this is very similar to what's happening, right? You wanna have high motivation and high ability. High motivation, high ability, which means you're likely gonna do the behavior, which is um, part of the first law and the third law of creating a good habit. Of make it obvious and make it easy, right? High motivation, high ability, the prompt's right there. And then reverse, to, bake, to break a bad habit, you wanna make it visible and difficult, right? So you wanna have that be different. And then you wanna hone in on your ABCs, your ABCs, which is anchor, behavior, and celebrate, which is kind of saying the same thing as this, just with a little bit more snappy to it, right? Your ABCs, you wanna anchor that behavior, make it obvious, make it attractive, right? Then you wanna do that behavior, and then you wanna celebrate it. That's like me, that's like me, that's like me. Um, so there's just a few more things on that. So I'll leave you with this. I'll leave you with this. The holy grail of habit change is not a single 1% improvement, but a thousand of them. It's a bunch of atomic habits stacked up each one a fundamental unit of the overall system. The secret of getting results that last is, is never stop making improvements. It's remarkable what you can build if you just don't stop. Small habits don't add up, they compound. That's the power of atomic habits. Tiny changes, remarkable results. So I'll leave you with a few questions to answer, right? A few questions to answer as you work through this stuff that I just shared and think about this in your own life. So question number one, question number one, what is one thing, what is one thing you can start doing right now or tomorrow that you know would be beneficial for your overall well-being? What is one thing you could start doing? What is one thing that you could start doing right now or tomorrow that you know would be beneficial for your overall well-being. Question two, what is one thing you could stop doing that you know would benefit you? What is one thing you could stop doing that you know would benefit you? Answer those two questions, write them down. Start writing these things down. Get to know 
your awareness, your acceptance, and then get to work on breaking bad habits, on creating good habits, installing and deleting the best habits you can possibly do and having them compound over time and aggregate over time so that you have these tiny habits that create amazing changes and lead you to become the best version of yourself on the most consistent basis, right? So we're, we're focusing on the fundamentals, eating, moving, sleeping, thinking, eating, moving, sleeping, thinking, focusing, honing in on the fundamentals, becoming aware of what we need to change, what we need to, to tweak, what we need to improve, what we're doing well, some of our inadequacies, writing all that stuff down, becoming aware of it, and then accepting it as is, accepting it as is, our current situation, our current reality, accepting it, and then moving into action. Because feelings follow behavior, setting up tiny, mini habits that are too small to fail, using the four laws of behavior change, understanding our map and our ABCs, and that tiny changes, tiny habits, create big results over time because they compound and aggregate, and then eventually you start to see yourself and your prior best becomes your new baseline, your lows become your new highs, and you're just slowly closing the gap between who you are and who you're capable of being, which is the best version of yourself, and that's that. So thank you for listening. This is episode 109. I know I kind of stumbled through those parts a little bit, but it's kind of my first time doing something like this where I have all of my notes here um, and reading things off of my computer as well to try to get you the best information possible, the best information that I've read and studied and learned, I'm trying to do my best Andrew Huberman on this podcast where I share really science-backed tools, research-backed tools that could change your life and I'm trying to change my life so I'm still figuring it out and going through it and learning um, and learning out loud and failing in public and trying to just give you guys the best information I found to be true and this is what I found about installing and deleting habits and I'm going to try and do more of these types of episodes where I'm sharing just my raw notes with you through this podcast as a way for us to learn and grow together so I can get better at doing this. You can see what information resonates with you and how you apply it to your life. What were the biggest ideas? What were the big ideas that popped out for you? What was a couple things that you're going to go do? You're going to answer those two questions and you're going to stick to them and you're going to create these tiny habits that are too small to fail, that will compound and aggregate over time. And let me know. Um, let me know. Keep me updated on your progress. Um, I'll see you guys back for episode 110 with Annie Brooke. And please share this with as many people as possible. Give us a subscribe, a like, uh, a review on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify. But most importantly, take good care of yourselves and others. Lots of love. See you next time.